and we're live hi everyone i am we're not live <laughs> and we are live <laughs> you know what this is live tv so we're doing the best that we can i'm sarah riff i am the senior director of global entertainment relations for jimmy Choo, and i am so thrilled that you could be joining us today as i sit down with wedding planner extraordinaire lisa Vores to talk all things bridal so as you know this is a live conversation i want to hear from all of you i want to know where you're joining us from put it in the chat and also please take advantage of us and lisa mostly you know if you are a bride to be ask her questions Absolutely. if you have any fashion conundrums please ask me we are here to support Lisa, thank you for being here today. My pleasure. I want to brag about Lisa. Lisa is well regarded by Vogue, Oprah, Martha Stewart, etc. as one of the most prolific wedding planners out there. She has done lots of celebrity weddings. I mean, I know that. Wow. You know, I know she did John Legend's wedding. I know she did Kate Upton's wedding, both of which were in Italy. Yes. That's right. Who else? And did she, she did do. my wedding, you guys. I didn't want to brag, <laughs> but she did my wedding. Talk about celebrities. I was really lucky to get in there early before her prices went. That's true. Because I could, you know, <laughs> that's the reason I can't get divorced is because I can't that's afford right. another wedding with Lisa. So I got to just hold on steady. Lisa, thank you for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Also, I want to add that we're both outfitted in really cute and very wedding appropriate outfits from Saks.com. So a little Stella McCartney and a little... Zimmerman, yes? Correct. So, Lisa. Yes. Everyone wants to know, how does one get into wedding planning? Well, I am not normal. I did not take the normal path into okay. wedding planning. So, I was a, like, basically an IT person. Okay, that very, is a very yes. non-traditional path to <laughs> wedding planning. So, basically, the longest Why story... Why do we have a tech team here? Why don't you do this for us? I've got this, guys. Um, Longest story, I will make super short. Mm -hmm. Basically, when I met my husband, mm -hmm. James, um, he was an actor, and I was like, wait a second, you can actually do what you love and be right. happy, and I wasn't exactly happy. So I quit okay. what I was doing and moved out to LA. I was in Colorado at the time and moved in with James. His uncle owns, owned at, uh, APA at the mm -hmm. time, a talent agency, and while I was living there, I was like, hey, let me help you throw these parties. So I started throwing parties parties for Uncle Roger. Okay. And my first event was for George Clooney's mother. Her um, birthday party. Um, Rosemary Clooney. That's his aunt. Oh, okay. okay. Nina Clooney. Nina Clooney. So um, people asked for my card and my mm -hmm. number and I wrote it on cocktail napkins. Amazing. And a star Super, was born. Yeah, a star was born. Okay. Well, I mean, I think that that's a reminder <laughs> too that we always should follow our path. hundred Do what we love 100%. and it will all fall into place. That's right. So, okay, we are hoping to get a lot of questions from you guys, but we have some in advance. And so I want to start grilling you. Yeah. What is the most fun wedding that you've ever worked on and why? I don't want you to feel compelled to have to say me because I'm the one asking the question. Fair enough. But if Fair you enough. want to, you know what I mean, and not have to uh, violate any NDAs from That's somebody right. else, then talk about it, you so know? besides you, we'll take yes. you out of the equation, to be fair. That's like choosing, you can't choose your favorite child, oh, I right? Could. <laughs> okay, yes. we won't ask that question. So for me, I mean, they're uniquely special. Right. I'm going to give a very diplomatic answer. They're uniquely special in each way. For me, we're very careful and choosy about mm -hmm. our client base. So mm -hmm. we make sure we're always in alignment. So I am, and my team is always passionate about what we're doing. So we love truly love every single event and i'm really vocal about not liking to work in the same place more than once so it's always a new adventure mm -hmm. so you know if i talk about um what sparks the most joy in me yes what sparks most joy it's the hardest most whacked out iterations of doing an event like the jungles of mexico with crocodiles and things like that that right. makes me happy right right <laughs> okay so I mean, I think one way that could be interesting to ask this too is, you know, because obviously destination weddings are yes. huge. Which destinations have you worked in that have proven to be more difficult than others? Mm. Is it the jungles of Mexico? Yeah, there's unique challenges of not getting eaten by crocodiles. But uh, that's a good question. They're all different. There's really different challenges, and it's really cool to, we know when we're mm -hmm. going into France or in Italy or in Mexico, we kind of know what we're walking into. Um, I think 
the path that we've chosen chosen has made it quite difficult for us so it's always going to be difficult because we're always in these new situations where right. we're like oh you have these duties that we didn't know what we were going to have on this but not only that but culturally you're working with people in you know in every different country and people but that's work the cool part you know. like that that makes me so happy right you know so yeah we've chosen a difficult way to do it but that's actually what we're known for and we'll do anything and we love not you know reinventing the wheels so right yeah okay well let's talk about some wedding trends what Do are it. things that you're seeing obviously we had a little bit of a shutdown with uh, COVID and I know yeah. that you know I, I have friends who had to put weddings on hold yeah and then I know a lot of people during that time decided to do things that were a little bit more intimate yep. and small but now that we have a little bit more freedom, what mm -hmm. are you noticing in terms of trends? It's crazy. We literally have one client who now has twins from when she signed with us to like through these postponements. Oh, and it's hasn't done the wedding yet. Yeah, it's wow. so 2023. We're still working on the postponements, which is mm -hmm. insane. But mm -hmm. so uh, for trends, like I'm actually, I think slightly obnoxiously vocal about not following trends and I, cause I want everyone to do, do their own thing. But I think for us, what we're seeing with our particular clients is now that the world has opened up, mm -hmm. it's like we're celebrating on top of celebrating, right. you know? So right. we've added, we've always had the three or four de day destination event, but <clears throat> now we have daytime you know the pool parties we have the daytime beach excursions we've got the after party now the after after party and now i literally have the after 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 party right. so it's like the triple layer but and we're seeing bigger weddings like we are known for doing the smaller events and right. we keep getting the 250 to 350 to 400. Wow. Wow. people are just going for it and right. it's amazing it's great to see i mean we really like people want to be together and people want to celebrate so we love it uh, obviously, this is one of the parts that really interests us is the fashion. Yes. And I was speaking with some friends the other day where, you know, we all got married several years ago. Yeah. But would our dresses stand up today? You know what I mean? And I yeah. think that to your point about avoiding trends, you want to do things that are classic and that, you know, right. you can look back kind of in that Carolyn Bissett Kennedy way and yeah. it's going to be, you know, just like a evergreen forever classic beautiful right. look right i think something that's really fun obviously is playing with accessories but i'd love For to sure. hear your input you know when you said you are working on these events where it's not just one event yeah it's like from the moment you do your invitations all the way through to yeah. every detail of your after after party you want consistency and yeah. you want the details to really be you know closely followed so mm -hmm. what are you like are you often tasked with helping them pick outfits, helping bridal parties? Talk about that 100%. So yeah, for, truly from start to finish. Mm -hmm. I mean, down to the, the mother of the, the bride as well. So the cool part with all these additional events is it's such an opportunity for this additional wardrobe and, right. and styling. And I think that is one of the biggest differences. Before it was, I need to get my gown. Right. Now it's like, I need to get my outfit. Do people start with the gowns or the shoes? Like what, what do okay, you find? It's such an, so not a fair question now that I'm sitting next to all of this. Listen, but I may have planted that one myself. <laughs> I mean, if because you started if with you, this, come on. Well, you have your something blue, right? Yeah. Like, so here's my take on that, and yes. then we'll go back to the wardrobe thing. So, you know, classically, if you asked a gown designer, of they're going to say 100% you need Luckily, your... Luckily, I didn't. <laughs> you need your gown first. Right. Because it's going to dictate so much. But in, my, in the spirit of letting people be themselves... Yes. If you're out on your shopping expedition and you come across this, you're like, I need to have that, get the shoe and then work around it. It might make it a little harder, I gotta be honest, but I don't think we have to follow any rules when it comes to that. Well, also because you said, you know, there's all these different moments and a lot of people are doing multiple changes. Oh my God. At the event. Yeah. This particular shoe, which I think is really beautifully oh, offered in blue, yeah. and is a really fun kind yeah. of like, otherwise I don't know how you're necessarily, that stumped me at my wedding. How am I incorporating blue? When yeah. I don't even like the color blue. Right. <laughs> as well as something borrowed, right? Right. And something old, right? And all of it. But we had made these specifically for Hailey Bieber for her wedding. And she wore this beautiful, listen, yeah. she had Virgil make her an incredible it's gown. So beautiful. Afterwards, where she also wore Jimmy Choo and something a lot more kind of like simple, a version of yeah. this called the mini of this one. But with the bow shoe with the abilene she did that with a really beautiful short dress and honestly 
you know, I think when you're looking at those photos after the fact, yeah. you want to have like different outfits that highlight whether it's you're changing into your after party look. So I totally. think that a bow shoe like that is something that could absolutely dictate the dress. Absolutely. And going back to the yeah. styling. And the and the family. And, and the, the family. Oh my God, wedding it's so parties. much. And the guests now, which is cuckoo. Yes. What do you guys think about that? For anyone that's planning <laughs> weddings, is that what we do in terms of making sure that we have a uniform look? Or is that micromanaging? I No, guests to, love to it. Let me tell you. And tell them what they have to you're wear. You're not telling them. You're giving them inspiration. You're I'm telling them you, get, you guys, guests it. love it. Because they're like, I don't know what to do. So. We'll get to that in one second. Yes. But the styling is so cool because it used to be just the gown. So now it's literally like, what am I wearing on a plane? And then the 72 events that mm -hmm. you have. So it's so fun and, and down to the point where now when I am designing the event, I actually start with the wardrobe and I'll ask the bride, it's like, it's that important. It's amazing. So I'll ask the bride like, well, what do you envision yourself wearing? Mm -hmm. And that I think brides don't actually know that they actually know at that moment. But when I ask that question, they are very clear on like, well, I see a lot of color or I wanna be in neutrals. And it's different obviously from the daytime to the nighttime and we have, whether in, warm, in Mexico or France or whatever. But it's really cool because it's such a good exercise and it really does dictate a lot. And we've learned that we actually are starting with the wardrobe mm -hmm. and then building the event from there. Because it's a vibe, it's a look, it's a feeling and it really does make a big difference. And then back to the, to the wedding guests really quickly, because we do need to answer that question. You're not being bossy, you're not dictating. It's actually quite helpful for the guests when you have that inspiration. Right, parameters. Yeah, exactly. And because that's like literally the number one question we get. Well, like, what does that mean? It's, you know, beach formal or beach fancy or whatever. So Mountain chic. Exactly. So those words mean nothing unless right. you have some visuals. Do and you incorporate just, visuals? 100%. So, you, so you'll so you send out a mood board? So we'll have it on the website mm -hmm. and it's really great. So we'll have the weekend itinerary and there's a little link of like, you know, inspiration. It's just fun. Right, right, that is fun. Yeah. So what about, you know, in terms of bridal parties? Do you think now are people, when they are having their bridesmaids, are they letting them choose their own dresses? Are they, you know, kind of having everyone uniform? Yeah. What's the trend today? So, well, the trend in my studios, because I don't allow the brides to be bossy, is, um, you know, I think you need to have a, a foundation and it needs to be consistent with your story. But I do think mm -hmm. with your foundation, then let your bridesmaids, groomsmen, whatever, wedding party, accessorize in their own iteration of themselves. Like, let them be, let them be them, you know, like, let their personalities shine. And like, I also think like, it's, it's you know, we do have a lot of sensitivity like with the wedding party some ladies might not be comfortable in a dress some ladies right. want to be in a jumpsuit or a pantsuit or whatever and i think as long as it's part of the story and consistent mm -hmm. i think it's beautiful that way but the shoes and the jewelry would you have them uniform no would you okay would you have them you know again offering parameters like yeah. we're doing metallics or we're doing gold we're right. doing white we're right. doing baby blue yeah parameters 100 mm -hmm. percent, which and will be helpful to them for sure right but not super bossy okay i like this this is a lot of <laughs> a lot of individualism i'm glad that this trend happened after my wedding That's so right. i could dictate what all of my um what all of my bridesmaids had to wear okay what about we had some questions about people who are planning weddings and again this does come back to footwear but you know, if you're doing something where it's a garden wedding mm -hmm. or you're doing something where the terrain is going to be less than ideal for mm -hmm. heels, mm -hmm. are you noticing a trend where people are open to wearing flats or more 100%. block heels? We, block heels for sure. And, and again, going back to the guests, mm -hmm. yes. So, it, we we also give that guidance to people. So we, right. one thing that's really helpful is setting expectations for people. So to- Across to, the board in life. Yeah, it, absolutely. <laughs> Tip. Yes. <laughs> Love right. tip. Um, so, and with with our our brides, we see we see actually a lot of footwear changes in addition to the gown yes, changes. So we might have a higher heel for some of the photos, and then we the, might start out here with the Bing. Exactly. Right, which is one of my favorite shoes. Yes. And this is a uh, exclusive to Saks in this beautiful lace, which would have been perfect with my dress. <laughs> 
which was Chantilly lace. And then we go into here as the night goes on. Which you're going to need. Uh huh. And, and that's great. And I think you're still upholding that really glamorous look and you're not sacrificing any of the, um, of the glamour for you exactly know, and then you, oh. you go after after or after this is after, your after 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 party and exactly. this brings me back to this is a very father of the bride yes. do you remember that movie yes, which is one of my of favorites course. and he was a shoe designer yes. for like an la gear kind of a thing and he made her these and i think that these are so fun and also you know let's be honest there's a lot of brides today that are getting married in suits you yep. know so this can be your actual your bridal look too if you're not you know the more kind of traditional bride that wants to wear a gown and you know you feel more at home in a pantsuit and you know elevated trainers you do you yes so i hope that we've had some time for some of our questions come in to come in so they are going to be read to us and we hope that we can get to as many as possible but let us know you guys the airwaves are speaking katie would love to know what is the best way to incorporate a pop of color into my wedding wardrobe i mean it's so easy i mean <laughs> Katie, <laughs> you came to the right place because we have this for you. This is hot pink. Lisa, are you That's seeing amazing. people do color now? Yes. Yes, a lot of absolutely fun brights. Fun brights, and that screams if they can handle that for the after party. This to me also. Oh, I love these. This is very Miami. You know what I mean? Or like your Mexico wedding jungle. I mean, to all my clients, Havana nights, who I forced the neon after party on. Neon Carnival. Ugh, it's amazing. You know, yeah. Coachella theme. I need to get those for all my clients. Well. Because it fits my storyboard. You're, you're at the right place. <laughs> you're at the right place. Katie, I think that, you know, if you want to do something really bright, this is fun. Also, I mean, a pop of color with yeah. the blue kills two birds with one stone because right. then you have, you know, you have your something, something blue, blue as well. What about um, in terms of, you know, people wanting to make sure that their guests understand you know like in terms of the I, I guess we covered this a little bit with the expectation of what they're wearing yeah but have you had any funny mishaps with that oh not mishaps just just extraordinary results really right, right. like people get into it it's amazing when you go formal formal that's incredible when you say beach chic like mm -hmm. the interpretations of that are amazing and we've even done um one of our clients used movies to help communicate the which is so clever and so smart of them but and really successful uh, the different different movies to um get people inspo for their attire so that's amazing no mishaps do you ever have to feed into um suggestions for the honeymoon if they want to keep it consistent yeah really all the time we are start to finish this is a full service operation <laughs> absolutely how, how like what would you say is the average um lead time on a wedding now you know not your client with the twins who's looking right. at three years three out. years but if i came to you and i said lisa actually i did come to you okay and i said what lisa, was our timeline our timeline was really short because I had it's my favorite. mistakenly thought that I could do it myself. <laughs> and oh, Sarah! So I think we had a, just like a few months. We That's didn't literally have my a ton favorite. of time. But in the real world, I would say like at least nine months is okay. realistic. Mm -hmm. And now because of the just everything so overly saturated and crazy and overbooked, mm -hmm. I would say it's a much longer lead time until we kind of get out of this still the postponements of the pandemic. So I would say definitely a year or more, but. Right. In a normal world, nine months is sufficient. I love the two month version. It's right. my favorite. It's just, you know, just then do it, just, you go. Yeah. In a way, it also does not allow for as much pontification or Which is very changing dangerous. of the minds, right? Does that happen a lot with you? Yes, we don't really allow that anymore. But I, this is why if someone contacts me and they want to get married in 2024, I'm be like, mm, right, not yet. Right. We don't even know that that relationship is going to be going on in 2024. <laughs> exactly. We've had another question come in. Clara said, I've never thought of handbags for my wedding, but those yes. two on the table look so cute. Can you show them to us? And what other options are there? Lisa, do you want to show off this lace one? I think mm -hmm. as long as it's being held by, <laughs> by that hand. The scary hand. Well, you know, so that's kind of your classic clutch. And again, that is offered in that same beautiful lace. So I think that, you know, whether you're doing a lace gown or you're doing something more sleek and you want to add a little texture. And then this obviously is one of our most successful, mm. popular styles called yeah. the bonbon. And I love this because 
I mean, with both of these, you can fit product in there, but this is just so fun. And that is incorporating so cute. a little bit of blue, yeah. I think, is great. It also allows for a little bit of a hands free situation, yeah. although that one does as well. Do you find that, do brides bring purses? Always. Because how else are they holding their We're lipsticks? We're holding them, but. Right? They do bring. It's part of accessorizing. I love it. That is, I mean, even for a brunch, that is so dang cute. I know we need the something blue before the brunch, but, and this, like, I like. Pish posh. You can incorporate. <laughs> Pish posh. That's right. You Get know, a handbag a bit of for blue every event. At the, you know, at the brunch. <laughs> that's right. But this, even for, like, the after party. I know I keep talking about these after parties, but. Well, we, see, we see where your head is at. <laughs> but, like, with your outfit, like, it's yes. such a cute after yes. party thing. Okay. If someone wants to invite me somewhere, I will bring, I will bring my clutch. Yes. Yes. But this is great. Thank you for showing I'm us. I'm scared to put it back on the stand. Ava would like to know what pair of shoes you think could be worn both on your wedding festivities, but also on my honeymoon. Ooh, oh, Ava. good question, Ava. Okay. Well, Ava, do you normally wear? Ava, <laughs> we don't know what kind of things you're wearing, but I feel like this is universal. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you have any input on that shoe. I mean, Ava, if you can handle it on your honeymoon, do it. But we don't know where Ava's going. Right. We don't know what she's doing on the honeymoon, but I think that that could suit, honestly, being in a bathing suit or being in a yeah. really cute gown. And if there's ever a time to look your best, it's during your honeymoon, because your husband's never gonna see you look like that again, let's be honest, you know what I mean? And he could still go with your sweats once you get married. I know, but I love it with the bathing suit, it's And so cute. this, I think, is really fun. Um, and the reason I wanna talk about this, too, is I think it's really important, going back to the, um, you know, the topic of having terrain that's not necessarily yes. hard, you know, hard wood or, right. you know, concrete. I think it's really nice to have the stability. And let's be honest, you are on your feet for Ugh, a long painful. time. You want to be dancing. You want to not think about your feet as well right. at all during the night. And you have great elevation and height yeah. as well, you know, to I love that kind of boost you up. And then this is really fun and could be worn throughout your honeymoon and afterwards with jeans. So I say this is a really smart investment, you know? Go, Ava, get Ava's both of them. Going to oh, Ava, Ava, if you're going to Saint Tropez, you must have both of these. <laughs> both of those. Take us with you. We would love to go to Saint Tropez. <laughs> and honestly- I'll plan your honeymoon, Ava. I'll plan your honeymoon. <laughs> I was gonna plan my own wedding until I had to hire an expert, but we would love to come and these will both be perfect. And this would be even really fun with shorts too. Yeah. And also wants to see something sparkly. Oh, oh. Ava, I love this girl. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna hand these off. Camera. Ava, your shopping is done. Yes, Ava, you you're you're a one stop shop. We uh. have we have wardrobe limitations that are not allowing me to go over there, <laughs> as all the ladies can relate to. This is like the Maharaja to me. I love this it. This is again, if you want to incorporate a little bit of color. This is actually the same shoe that I'm wearing, oh. um, which comes in a variety of beautiful colors. But this is like, this really lets everyone at the party know that you're the bride. 100%. You know what I mean? And all eyes need to and be on Ava, you. And Ava, on your honeymoon, when you guys go out to the clubs. Yes, in Saint-Tropez. Done. Cinq en cinq. <laughs> exactly. You, you are ready. Gina, anybody else? Yes. Let, we have one more from Jenna. I'm hearing, getting married in Italy in September. Love Which it. What pair of shoes would you recommend? Which what of shoes? Pair, pair of shoes. shoes. Oh. Well, I okay, so obviously the the weddings that we were referencing yes. were in Italy. I think yeah. one was was one at Villa Dest and one was part of the event was, yeah. And then one was in Tuscany, right? Yep. Sorry I'm a celebrity stalker. But Let's I think about what shoes they were. So yeah, I mean Italy in particular. Yeah. It's still gonna be nice. So it's such a great month in mm -hmm. Italy. So your terrain is get, you're gonna have multiple trains. You're gonna have lots of gravel. You're mm -hmm. gonna have the decomposed granite. Um, you're gonna have a little cobblestone. So, what do we have on the table? I mean, I love. I mean, going back to you know. Well, honestly, any of these. Yeah. This I think is always. This is. Um, this is an exclusive to Saxon. This is always gonna be a great. Uh, shape. Not only is it something that I think will be minimally chic for you to wear with many things afterwards, but a little bit with the fluted heel. Yeah, I love that. It actually does give you a lot more uh, stability than mm -hmm. I think, you know, maybe the traditional stiletto, stiletto and it allows definitely. for a little bit more flexibility. That I'm sorry, you I did go wrong not with. see. Look at that detail. <gasps> well, like that. like you, Lisa Vorse Enterprises, we're all about the details that's here at right. Jimmy Choo, you know? Oh, that's so pretty. So I think that that's fun. Or, you know, this I think would also be really beautiful. But honestly, 
uh, I could I could pick any number of yeah. shoes for you, and I think that you will be set. Maybe do something with the bow. I know, I love these bows. And the last question that we have, actually a couple people asked about this, are the shoes that you both are wearing. Yes. And then some people asked about what are minimalistic block heel options. Mm, okay, okay. You talk about do you wanna, well, Why don't you talk about the shoe that you're wearing? Because I think that actually answers their question and is a block heel option. And also for someone that has a reconstructed knee. Um, Tell me this about you. <laughs> this is about <laughs> who, Gina? Lucy. Lucy. <laughs> Sorry, Lucy. Lucy, these sh <laughs> block heels are That's amazing. 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 So comfortable. Walked all the way through the mall and the parking structure in them. Um, I, I mean, this is, a, this is like the highest I can go. Okay but I won't make it about me. Right, but I think that I think that that's really important to, you know, because like you said, we're going from everyone from the bride to the mother of the bride, right. you know, multiple generations of people that you could be dressing for the wedding and everybody has a different comfort level. So yeah. I think, you know, something like this, especially for the most part, you're in a longer gown. I think that this is still gonna give you that elevation, yeah. but it's gonna be really comfortable. Yeah, those are great. And then Helwies, yeah. you know, when you have this much platform, mm -hmm. you, it really, it really does feel like you could run a mile. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? We don't all have to. It's not Julia Roberts and no, the Runaway Bride or anything. But I'm gonna get but this before we leave. These ones. No, those. These ones. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you'll That's, be walking out with these. Yeah. But absolutely. I think that either of these are great block heel options. And then my shoe. Both of our shoes are available at sax.com. My shoe is a different version of the something blue. Again. And it does have those pretty details on the back too. Yeah, it's so beautiful. This is in the um, in the patent and I have to say, um, very comfortable as well. Jimmy Choo's always comfortable. I know. Not just know. because I'm sitting here. Exactly. It's true. Is that it? No more questions? Well, listen, we have had such a fun time. Ava, you have fun on your honeymoon. I know, Ava. <laughs> <laughs> really the takeaway here for me is that I don't know why I'm not going to Santa Fe. I know. You know? But Ava, I'll go with you. I want to ask one last question. Yes. And this maybe is a little bit self-serving, but I think that, you know, anyone who's tuning in might think this is interesting. What is your takeaway on Val Renewals? Oh, well, if you're on a reality TV, I'd say no. But in general, mm -hmm. especially because someone's dangerously close to needing to do a Val Renewal, not because of That's your relationship, be because of the timeline, I love them. We have some... There's just so many cuter options to wear now. I would exactly. love... Exactly. And I'm, it can be smaller. It's, you know... Right. We are doing... Are you doing one? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's very exciting. So I'm going to have to talk to her offline yes. about who that is. But... You'll never tell. Okay. But yours should be coming up really soon. Stay tuned, everyone. Yes. Ava, I'm going to invite you. <laughs> Lisa, thank you so much for being oh, here. Thank you for thank having me. Thank you for me. you know your expertise and your humor and your candor. And I really hope that everybody had a fun time and gets to check out some of the different product that we have at Saks, as well as just all the beautiful Jimmy Choo Bridal. And for anyone who's planning a wedding, good luck and Godspeed. Good luck, you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. <laughs> Bye.